in a candid tell-all interview with Hoppy Kirchwell with TalkLine on Metro News, Shane Lyons stepped into the batter's box and swung for the fences. He let it all hang out in an interview with Hoppy Kirchwell this morning where he discussed Neil Brown and his job situation, the NIL, Title IX issues, even his sit-down talk with E. Gordon Gee the day he was fired. That and more on this episode of Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. What is up? Welcome in, guys. My name is Mountaineer Paul. You guys have landed yourself once again at Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. Thanks, guys, for stopping in. What a morning it's been already. We've got some heat coming from Talkline and Hoppy. Hoppy did a sit-down interview with Shane Lyons today, Hop Talk Line and Metro News, and we've got some video clips we're going to go through that I've edited to kind of sum up everything that was said in this interview. First up, we're going to be talking about what he had to say about Neil Brown. But what is your evaluation as to how he is doing as a head coach? And if you were still the AD, would you keep him? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, again, you know, people don't see behind the scenes, which an athletic director you do. So you, you look at it, and I think last week really proved a point, which I, I felt strongly when I was athletic director, that he had not lost this team. And that's the big thing where you're in the locker room, you're around the student athletes, and and they played very, very hard Saturday at a, at a tough place to play. You know, Oklahoma State you know, hadn't lost a home game in how many, two years. In two years. And, um, is it where we need to be? The answer is no, Hoppy. I mean, you know, we were looking at probably seven or eight wins this year. Um, so did they meet our expectations? No. Did it meet Neil Brown's expectations? No. A couple, a couple plays. They go on our way early in the season against Kansas and against Pitt. Mm -hmm. you know, we could be setting the seven wins. We wouldn't be having this conversation, in my opinion, today. So what Neil Brown took over and the players he had his first couple of years and plus adding COVID in there, I, I honestly look at this as year two for Neil Brown, not year four, year really? two. It's kind of resetting it, and, and that, that was part of it because the contract extension was resetting it to say, okay, going forward from here and he's constantly building this thing and you make a coaching change you're taking three years some backward steps you're not you're not moving forward you're going backwards you're going to lose kids to the portal you're going to lose a very good recruiting class that he has right now you talk about him being fired that doesn't help the situation at all uh, especially in the world that we live in in, in recruiting well, i think that you know, he deserves a, a chance. That's not my decision. But if, if I was still sitting in this, this chair today, I, I think, yeah, he. And this isn't about a contract. This is about the issue at hand of our football program. Are we constantly going to get better? The answer is yes. You would, if you were still there, you would want to keep him. I would. I think he checks every box that we're looking for in a head coach. Unfortunately, the big box is he needs to win more football games. I believe that's coming in the future. Right now, he's, he's setting a 500 record, a little bit below 500. But you look at it to say, can we build off of this? And I think the answer is yes, it can be built off of. It's a process. It's not going to happen instantaneously, um, especially some of the, the players that he inherited and, and so on. It, Wow. So that was a mouthful, right? I agree with some of the things he had to say there as far as it was a great win against a team that hadn't lost at home in two years, despite whether or not they were beat up. That's still a good team win. And yet the team showed a lot of fight. They obviously had not given up on Neil Brown. But the reason I think this was a good thing for Shane Lyons to have been fired, some of that old guard mentality. He showed it in the interview. If you fire a coach, you're going to go back three years. Well, we've seen that over and over again this year in the transfer portal era where a team like TCU that wins five or six games the year before can be 11-0. and 0. And there are several examples that, of that throughout the country where teams have vastly improved in just one season, Kansas being another one of those in our own conference. We need somebody that understands the NIL era because there's one thing that Shane Lyons definitely proved in all these interviews today was that he just does not get it when it comes to NIL. That is obvious to me. And it explains a lot to do with why we had to go to the FCS and group of five levels to get our talent in the offseason. He even went so far as to say he would still keep Neil Brown. 
So he hasn't learned from any of those mistakes. He's in Alabama. They can have it. In this second video clip, we're going to see where he talked about talking with E. Gordon Gee and the moment he fired him. And now he's calling himself a scapegoat. I had this meeting already set for, for uh, Sunday afternoon and then went to Blaney House that afternoon and uh, sat down with Dr. Gee. And uh, after you know, a few casual uh, conversations about various things, he said, you know, we're, we're going to make a change. So obviously that came to, to great surprise. And I asked him, I wanted to see what his issue was and saying, well, why, why, why change? Of course, he kind of beat around the bush. It, it boils down to hobby. It boils down to the football situation. A lot of heat was surrounding our, our football program at that time. I look at it that I'm the scapegoat. You know, I'm the guy. Scapegoat. Yeah. You know, the big thing is, is about the contract extension of Neil Brown. And Neil Brown, and there was a deal, you all redid the deal in 2021. Uh, he had an extension uh, that would take him, I think, through, I think through 2026. And uh, if uh, he were to be fired, then he would be due the full amount of the contract. By the same token, if he left somewhere, he'd have to reimburse the university. That's right. And go back to, to 2020. Neil had been here two years. I get it. His record was 500 at the time. But I looked at the first two years and the t trajectory of the program, where it was heading in the right direction. The culture was right. The student athletes, the type of recruiting, everything that was happening in that program was heading in the right direction. His name had come up for a couple of jobs, Auburn and South Carolina. As an athletic director, you start juggling this to say, you know, what if he wins the next year? Well, if he wins the next year, his buyout was like a million and a half to two million dollars, which is not much in, in our business. So my thinking was we need to increase his buyout if he ends up leaving to close to five, you know, five million dollars, which we ended up doing. But in turn, they negotiate on their side to say, well, if he stays and you fire him, then, you know, you, you, you owe a certain amount, which was 100 percent of his contract. Jane Lyons decision or an athletic director's decision. There's there's other people, you know, that's involved in that, including the president. Obviously, you had to pitch that deal to the president and say, this is what I want to do with Shane Lyons. Did Dr. Gee say, OK? Yeah. I mean, we pitched it to say we want to keep Neil and we think he's the, the future of our football program. And, you know, with this, we need to, to go back to his agents and, and work a deal. And that's what happened. And, you know, President Gee was involved and, and Rob Alsop was involved. And ultimately, you know, the chairman of the board, Dave Alvarez, you know, signed off. So, so Shane Lyons says he's a scapegoat. And while that may not be true, I will say this. If you're ever in a foxhole, you might want Shane Lyons in there with you because he is loyal to the very end, it seems like, to people. Neil Brown and his agent played him like a fiddle. That's how I feel. You know, the, he talks about in the interview, he says the Auburn job and another job came up, and they felt like he needed to lock Neil up. And that tells me Neil Brown's agent is a good one. What it also tells me is – he obviously wasn't willing to fire Neil Brown, and so they fired him instead, which makes me wonder, all the people that say Kelly Zinn may be coming back and that Neil may be staying, that may be true. It just goes against everything. Why did they fire Shane Lyons then? I know there were other things that he didn't do great, but if the only reason they fired him was Neil Brown and his reluctancy to fire him, I have questions about the whole situation. It just really confuses me. But obviously, Shane Lyons is still really hurt. I mean, I was a counselor. We used to have a saying that facts aren't your feelings. And I think Shane Lyons is still speaking from a place of hurt. But to say he's a scapegoat, that's a little bit too far for me. A change was needed at the top. And if you don't need any more reason to believe that, check out what he says on the NIL situation here in this video clip. That's a private entity, that they are not subject to uh, Title IX issues, that they can do whatever they want. Therefore, you shouldn't have to worry about that because they are a private entity. So I think that they believe they would not get in trouble on Title IX just by handing out money to whoever wants it. And that is correct. And that's why there's a separation, there's an arm's length hobby between what the department can do and what they can do. As long as they're doing it, we don't have Title IX issues. So what, were, what did they want to do that you said that's over the line? Um, I, I believe they, well, which we started doing, they wanted our coaches to be more involved in promotion, in the, in the promotion of that. Uh, 
from what I understand, they wanted us to be more involved in helping fundraise or, or identifying, you know, potential donors for fundraising aspects of that. And, and that's where the more you get involved, we can do education, which we do. Um, we can do, you know, tax, you know, contract litigation, all that for our student athletes. But making the deals itself, we can't get involved in the department. If we start making the deals ourselves or identifying, you know, um, actual sponsors or people to give to the trust, then that starts getting closer and closer that you as an athletic department are involved and it could run Title IX implications. If it's all done by them, it's it's not an issue. Another another instance of the old guard mentality. Just that mentality where I'm not going to change too much or get out of my comfort zone or get up with the times. I'm sure there is some kind of fear when it comes to Title IX issues and getting too involved with the Country Roads Trust. I get that. But Oliver Luck knows what he's doing. He is a former athletic director himself. And in my opinion... For Shane Lyons to feel as though Oliver Luck's trying to drag him into something shady or not want to be too involved with that situation because he's afraid of some kind of ramifications speaks to just how conservative Shane Lyons really is. For him to say they came on to him because he was not aggressive enough, in my opinion, is probably an understatement. When I was researching for this video a little bit, I looked around the country and saw trusts like the Country Road Trust and other universities that were closely knit or more closely knit than West Virginia University is with theirs. Teams like Maryland, Syracuse, Illinois, all have trusts and coaching staffs that are very closely knit and that are openly promoting that thing. So I don't agree with what Shane Lyon said here. I just think he didn't know enough about it, didn't care enough to concern himself with it, and thought they can just handle that themselves. We do what we do. They do what they do. It's just a mess, guys. You know, if anything, Shane Lyons showed to me how incompetent he was in today's day and age to be an athletic director. There are some of you that's going to disagree with that, and you're more than free to do that. You're part of the problem as well. I feel like Shane Lyons, it's good that he's back at Alabama. Good for him. But we need somebody at West Virginia that's going to be hip, that's going to be cool, somebody that's going to get up with the times, somebody that's going to get involved with the Country Roads Trust, somebody that's going to make deals with players because that's what's going on. That's why we keep losing hours, and that's why we're going to continue to lose hours until we do something about it. I'm not cool with where those things are, and I can only pray that they continue to get better for the sake of West Virginia University. Let me know down in the comments, guys, how you feel about it. Are you pissed like I am? Do you wish that we would get an athletic director in here sometime, hopefully soon, that knows what they're doing in the NIL space, because that seems to be more and more as we go, the number one space to be involved in as far as athletic directors go. Also, guys, do me one big favor and move your finger just a couple inches and like this video. And if you're not subscribed to Mountaineer Paul Talks Football, please, guys, it's saying over 80% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. Please try and subscribe today, guys. I just made it to 500. I want to thank you guys so much. Those of you that are subscribed, we've made it to 500. That's a big accomplishment. We did that in just over a month. Let's get to 1,000 now. Really appreciate you guys, man. Man, that was a lot, guys. I really appreciate you guys for stopping in. Just wanted to do a quicker video, some of what Shane Lyon said. There's still more. I want to thank Metro News and Talkline for some of the video clips that I was able to take. I really appreciate that, guys. This has been another edition of Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. This video is over, and I am out. This is for camera. Can you tell? Oh.